So now I have to introduce myself. Uh, <laughs> no, my, I'm, I'm reporting on the Tax and Budget Subcommittee, and my uh, Vice Chair is uh, Terry Martesian. Um, obviously, we didn't have much to talk about uh, in this session. You said you're already done. <laughs> Uh, first, first of all, I want to acknowledge the recommendations from the summit that have been implemented in the past. These include personal income tax reform, creation of the Tax Policy Office, Department of Revenue, state pension reform, a property tax cap, corporate tax reform, state tax reform, the repeal of the franchise tax, increasing the direct expensing provisions uh, to match the federal limits, removing the sales tax and utility costs, reducing the minimum tax to $400, enacting some property tax reform out of the, uh, with the car tax. Uh, if you notice, well, I'll come back to that. Uh, providing some tax relief for uh, retirement income. We've also held the line on broad-based tax increases and fought back efforts to impose binding arbitration on our labor agreements. All these actions are important, and they got their start out of this summit. It tells us that you're listening to us, and we need to make sure there's no back backpedaling on those gains. One of the significant improvements in the last two years has been the unemployment insurance issue. We used to be 50 out of 50, as I told my group. There were some people at the General Assembly, not there now, but said if we're 50, we can't get any more bad news. Um, the uh, changes enacted uh, in discussions with the rating systems, the tax foundations, uh, has helped Rhode Island improve that uh, two year, uh, last two years ago to 23. We slipped a little back a little bit with number 29. Our work's not done here. Uh, we need to keep looking at the system and make it more competitive. Recognizing that we're in a significant budget deficit, uh, that we have made some progress on, but recognizing we have dug ourselves a nice big hole, our recommendations are made to minimize financial impact on the budget, but to continue to move the state forward. We oppose any broad-based increase in taxes. We support more control on state spending and department budgets. Department budget overruns should not be acceptable. We support continued phase out of the uh, car tax. Uh, speaker, uh, if you look at these red dots on these walls, the whole bunch of them on continuing the car tax, these were our voting mechanisms. I would say in true Rhode Island fashion, I did get somebody come up and say, can I have some more votes? <laughs> uh, we believe that we should uh, eventually eliminate the Rhode Island estate tax, that only 13 states are still have estate taxes. Our current exemption is now the third lowest uh, in the state, only Massachusetts and Oregon are, uh, have lower exemptions. Uh, as other states move to decrease or eliminate their states, we are again becoming an outlier. As an interim, we are proposing to exempt the state taxes on small businesses and family farms, uh, which I think will have an impact on jobs. Uh, and we would look to uh, do as much as we can on that factor. One principle that we want to make set forth is that changes to the tax system should be based on what is fair and right, not what revenue is, will be lost. Our tax system needs to have integrity. In light of this, we ask you to pass a, state, a statute of limitation on tax collections of 10 years, which is in line with the federal statute of limitations. We also pr uh, propose a reduction in the user's 18% interest rate charges on overdue accounts to go back to the Carter years. Uh, an 18% interest rate is just not right. It should be prime plus uh, a certain percentage. The letter of good standing issue, which we had, was a major concern a number of years ago, we made some progress on that, but it still needs some work, and we're getting uh, promises from the Division of Taxation that they are working on it. Um, the final one is we had a change in sales tax Supreme Court case uh, with Wayfair, uh, versus, Wayfair versus uh, South Dakota, which changed the taxation of internet taxation. And what they, the Wayfair case did is said, if you have $100,000 of sales in a state or 200 transactions, you should be reporting and remitting taxes to the state. Uh, that happened in the summer. We've been look, the people have been looking at it. A lot of states have moved to implement that threshold. 
uh, and I think we should do it, and we should do it now, early in the session. We shouldn't wait until um, the budget because we're missing potentially five months of sales uh, remittance, and I think that's important. I hate to be an advocate of increasing taxes, but those taxes are really due. It's just hard to collect. Um, rec we recognize that Rhode Island is facing a significant budget deficit of more than $200 million. It's, it's critical we continue to improve our business climate in Rhode Island, and we must focus on business growth and the creation of good new jobs. If I would challenge the General Assembly members to organize a pro-growth, pro-jobs caucus in each chamber and promote an improved competitive, competitive business climate. These caucuses should go across party line and would identify members who recognize and realize the importance of a positive position on jobs. I also challenge the small business people here in attendance that they need to become active in their government process and participate in the political process. It's economic growth, it's business climate, and it's jobs. Tax and regulatory policy does impact migration patterns. <coughs> we are among the higher tax states where that is evident. Our population is not growing, and much of that is attributable to our business climate issues. In 2022, we may very well see a direct impact on that potential loss of one of our congressional seats. Finally, um, I know we've had some, some uh, discussions in the rules on uh, allowing more bills to come forth. I'm going to take a different position. I'm going to say we don't need more bills. We need better bills. And we need well thought out bills because the, the consequences of bad bills is a problem. I'm off the clock now. I'm introducing the next one. <laughs> <laughs> We started the session off with uh, hearing from Neil Steinberg um, on education, and we're going to finish it off with John Gregory, uh, the chair of workforce development, um, and, and, and his co-chair, his uh, vice chair is Mary Ann Shellcross Smith with Dr. Daycare. Um, I've got a couple of prefaces on this. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Did you give me a gift? No, 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 you haven't earned it yet. <laughs> um, education, as we heard this morning, is one of the most important issues in Rhode Island. has had disappointing results from testing. We started off the morning hearing from Neil Steinberg and the Foundation's initiative to address education reform that need to be, we need to have to compete in the 21st century. That was echoed by uh, President uh, Ron Makeley. I can think of no issue that is more critical to the success of the Rhode Island economy than educating our children to become productive members of our society. With Massachusetts being next door, we have essentially the same demographics. They have been working on successfully on education reform for 25 years. One of my original mentors was Jack Rennie, who was referenced this morning. He was a driving force from the business community, and uh, they, made the, they made it happen. Massachusetts did it, they kept the course, we have sat around and accepted mediocrity. Mediocrity is not acceptable. Every Rhode Islander should be outraged at our results. John, I need your report. 